Hello everyone, welcome back for another edition of Virtual Yin Yoga. I'm your instructor Mike and I'm happy to have you with me this evening. What we're going to do today, since it's been a while since I've actually taught one of these classes, we're going to get back to our everyday series. Uh, so a forward bend, back bend, and a twist for each side. Although I will offer up variations, substitutions, different options for you to play around with, uh, but that's going to be our general game plan for tonight. So a few things you want to grab, you want your yoga mat, if you got one. Uh, if you don't have one, you can just do it on the floor, it's totally fine. Uh, something else you may want to consider is having a block. I'm definitely going to demonstrate a different way to do a back bend for this practice and use uh, possibly use blocks for a twist option, but see how it goes. Um, but other than that, just bring your body and when you're ready, let's start the practice. And we'll begin in a comfortable position, laying down either on your mat or on the floor, just wherever you're most comfortable, go there and close your eyes. Nothing to see at this point, but more to feel, more to pay attention to. I want you to pay attention to your breath. Breathe low in your belly, low in your diaphragm. If you'd like to double check if you're doing this correctly, place a hand on your stomach below your belly button. You'll feel the stomach expand with an inhale. It will contract with an exhale. And this is belly breathing. It's a breathing technique I recommend for our practice. You know, it's a slower paced practice. We want to slow the body down, Breathing low in your diaphragm will help with that. It slows the heart down, slows the nervous system down, and it slows the mind down. And what we're doing for a nice practice, again, everyday yoga. We're going to stretch, hold some poses for a while, work into our hips and into our spine. A nice balance between the two. But during the hour, you know, if you need some help, um, something you can always do is just really listen to the modifications and the options that I suggest for you. Every pose that I offer always has some variation to it. So if you're not quite sure what's going on, uh, definitely pay attention to the suggestions that I make in the practice and a lot of times it's really going to help you out. But something else that I'd recommend you do is just again, let experience guide you. Let your body tell you what you need to do. Take a few deep breaths, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes. We're going to start our practice off loosening up the hips and the spine. So you're going to lay on your back, bring your knees up to the chest, cradle legs a little bit, rock up and down your spine, go side to side, you know, make some circles. Try to crack your back if you can. Sometimes that feels nice, get that loose and limber. But again, this is just a way to wake up the hips and the spine for what we're going to do in our practice today. It's actually something I recommend you do every single morning. At that moment you wake up, you're already laying in bed, just cradle your legs a little bit, gently rock around. Your back will thank you for that later. But since we're already laying down, let's just start off with a twist pose, reclining twist. So you're gonna bring the knees up to the chest, take the legs over to a side, lay them on the floor. This is gonna be our pose for now. Uh, it doesn't matter which side you go to. But depending on the side you're going to, that's going to dictate which side of the back you're stretching and which uh, outside the leg and, and glute you're getting. But if you're going to the left, just for an example, it's lower right side of the back, outside the right leg, and glutes. If you're going to the right, it would be the opposite. Uh, you could always view it as the top side of the twist as well. But a nice broad stretch here and being able to relax into it. However, if you're in this and you're saying, I don't really feel that broad stretch. You know, maybe it's more in the back of your hips. Definitely use a block. And I'd also recommend it too if you can't get the knees together or if you can't get your legs to the floor. But you have that block, you can put it under the bottom leg or in between your knees. And a lot of times it's gonna alleviate the issues of that back of the hip pain or just make it more comfortable for you when you're laying yourself down on the floor here. But just breathe. You know, we're only going to be here for a few minutes on each side, so we're not worried too much about how deep we go. Again, it's just more a matter of being able to relax in the pose while you feel a stretch. And just to give you a reference as to how hard I want you to participate in this practice, I call it my scale of stretching. You know, scale of 1 to 10. If 10 were to be your deepest stretch, go for around 6 and 7. That will be your sweet spot.
Take a few deep breaths, and when you're ready, you can slowly unwind. Or maybe twist, take your time on out. And you could just lay here for a moment, or you can always bring your knees back up to the chest and cradle your legs. Uh, just whatever is most comfortable in the moment, go ahead and do that. When you're ready, you can make your way for the other side. Whichever side that is for you, just make sure it's the other one. But laying on the back, knees up to the chest, legs over to the side, lay them on the floor, and this is your pose. Right? You should feel that top side of the back. Now I'm going to the right, just for the example, so I'm feeling lower left side of the back, outside of the left leg a little bit, glutes as well. But two sides are different. Maybe you get here and you notice that, like you got to put a block in between your knees, under the bottom leg, especially if you can't get the legs to the floor and knees together, uh, or if you're feeling it in the back of your hip, right? Don't push through anything that's localized like that. You're, you're going to overstretch. And I'd rather you understretch than overstretch any day of the week, right? In this practice, you want to be gentle with yourself, which is a very different emphasis from what we're used to. You know, most of the time when we think of exercise, we usually think of strengthening, beating yourself up, being tired the next day. This is more of a, a recovery practice for that. This is the complementary practice to strengthening. Go ahead and take a few deep breaths, and when you're ready, there is your time. Slowly unwind from the twist. Take the time out. The next target area we're going to work into is going to be our uh, forward bend. So it's really going to be for the back. But what you do with your legs will be 100% up to you. We'll give you three choices. The first one, you know, we're pretty familiar with, the butterfly pose. Soles of the feet brought together in front of you, fall in round pose best you can. Inner thighs and back are your target areas. But if you're in this pose and you're saying, eh, it kind of feels like it's more my knees that are getting it. Uh, that's localized, right? You don't want to do that. It's overstretching. So another option for you would be a dragonfly pose, where you spread your legs, lean forward. You get the inner thighs, get the back. Get your hamstrings as well. If you want a pure hamstring stretch, again, this is 100% up to you. But caterpillar pose is always a variation you could do. You have both legs out in front of you, lean forward, grab something comfortable. You know, usually that's going to be either the shins or the ankles or the toes. I feel like doing a dragonfly pose today. I'm pretty tight in my inner thighs and my hamstrings, so I want to knock out both at the same time as best as I can here. But again, same deal. Ease into it. Don't feel obligated to stretch as hard as possible. I understand why people do that. You know, again, we're so... We're so familiar with the idea of punishing ourselves when we exercise that we forget that you don't necessarily have to do that uh, to have an effective practice. You know, sometimes it's really just a matter of relaxing into it. Allow your head to come forward here too. When the neck can come forward, the head can come forward, you can work into your neck and your cervical spine a little bit, just as much as you can work into your back and your lumbar. We want to work all the areas of the spine as best we can. Go ahead and take a few deep breaths, and when you're ready, there is your time. Use your hands. Slowly push out again. You lean back, and you can lay down. Same deal, taking your time, getting there. We have one more pose left to do. We just have to do our back bend.
So our next and last gen posture is a back bend. Two choices, uh, Sphinx pose and supported bridge. I'm already laying on my back, so I'm just gonna demonstrate supported bridge. This is only if you have a block. If you don't, then just disregard this. But what you can do is you can lift your hips up and place a block under your hips. Make sure you have that support there. It's really important. I want you to actually do a bridge pose for five minutes. This would hurt your back. Right, so make sure you got that block there so you can allow yourself to sink into that. And that's called a supported bridge. We have a prop under the back when you're doing a bridge pose. But Sphinx pose is your other option. This one you don't need a prop for. Lay on your stomach, prop up onto the forearms and the elbows, and this is your pose. For both of them, you should feel dull, gentle pressure in your lower back, in the lumbar spine. That's all it should be, dull and gentle. Now, if it feels sharp, you lower down. For both of them, don't push through it. Sharpness is always a sign of overcompression, and I would rather, again, you underdo this, you know, live to yoga another day. But allow your stomach muscles to soften, right? Let your core, your back muscles, your glutes, let them all relax here. It's really critical for us to do. You know, the more we can relax, again, the deeper we can go into ourselves, into our body. And ultimately, that's how we need to approach our practice if we want to work our joints, you know, working the joints. Muscles have to be soft because if they're flexing and they're tightening and we're engaging them, they're actually locking up the joints from being able to move. So we want to make sure that we can relax all those muscles. Go ahead and take a few deep breaths, and when you're ready, there is your time, real slow. Just lay down, either on your back or on your stomach. After a deep back bend like that, it's going to feel nice to do a gentle forward bend. So something like a child's pose might feel really nice right about now. Uh, you could always do a down dog or lay on your back, right legs. We are now at the end of our practice. And if you're ready for Shavasana, for a corpse pose, you can always lay on your back. Some people would prefer to lay on their side or even on their stomach. You could sit upright like you're in meditation, just wherever you're most comfortable, go there and close your eyes. There's nothing to see at this point, but more to feel, more to pay attention to. Again, focusing on that breath, breathe low in the belly, low in the diaphragm. Turn your senses, your awareness within. And for the last few minutes, just observe that work you've done. It was only a 15 minute practice, but what differences have you made with just that short amount of time? No formal ending to the practice. You can stay in your Shavasana as long as you'd like. That's officially all that I have for you. Well, thank you all for watching and sharing your practice with me. It's been my pleasure. Namaste.